Hey, it's Mazzy here. This is the best of the rest of 2021. In a way, this video is an epilogue for the best albums released this year. Link below, several links below. Click that little thing that goes down and look at those links below and you'll see my best of new releases and reissues of 2021. You'll see my favorite box sets of 2021 and my favorite jazz acquisitions of 2021, as well as uh, the archivist and my pulls from the Coleman Collection in 2021, the records that we kept for ourselves are so, sort of our favorites or, or records that are special to us. What this is um, are the rest of the best of this year. Now, I posted my best of in early December and obviously uh, records trickled out in December. Also, your comments, you, right over there, that one, that person, and that person, and that person commented on several records. Why didn't you include this or that? Well, of course, I included my favorites, but there were some I actually forgot. And so I'm including those here again in no random order. These are just records that are, to me, really wonderful. Um, new and reissues and several box sets. So let's get on with it. I'm starting with Moses Sumney. Moses Sumney is an artist. Uh, his first two albums, I believe, they're both double albums, have been on my best list for the last several years, two, three years ago, I believe. He's um, a neo-soul artist that's sort of an electronica of phase two, very ethereal, beautiful, beautiful vocals, elaborate packages on his records. What this is, this is called Live from Black Alicia. And this was originally uh, this set up the band, his band was rehearsing in the, um, was it the Black Mountains or the forests in the South for what would have been the 2020 uh, tour. And obviously because of the pandemic, it was uh, shelved. And he decided to pull together an elaborate film live concert, almost like a pay-per-view, but I believe it's on video now. I just got this in the last week. It's so beautiful. It's um, I have not seen the video yet. I'm looking forward to see the concert. I think it, he put it together. He produced, uh, possibly directed it. And it's um, a, a very visualization. He's very visual in his, uh, his personal physique and his beauty and photography of his albums as well as his music. Now, A live rendition, in a way, these are live versions, in a way, reimagined of, of songs from his first two albums. I got to say, there's some really ethereal, moody stuff, and there are some very lively uh, pieces with him and the band that are reminiscent of uh, Jeff Buckley when he sounds a little like Led Zeppelin. Not that this is going to sound like um, Robert Plant at all, but they get into that exuberance of the Jeff uh, Buckley version of Robert Plant. Highly recommend it if, if this description uh, uh, tickles your fancy, but um, his first two albums, I would say, are more level-headed. This has a little more punch because it's basically a, a live um, production. Love it. Moses Sumney. Next, um, a reissue is Sun Ra's Omniverse, Sun Ra and his orchestra. Now, this was recorded in 1979, released on his own Saturn label. If you don't know uh, Sun Ra, Sun Ra is from Saturn, and the orchestra released a lot of... Uh, Saturn was their own label that he released records. Now, there was never a cover, because when they were releasing albums back in the day, they were usually sold at his shows uh, and directly uh, to fans, and it would hand draw the covers. So this uh, this is on the Harmonium Modern Harmonic, excuse me, Modern Harmonic label, which is an offshoot of um, Sunday's record, and it's fantastic. I would say about this record, it's got a slight uh, purple tint to it. This is more in the box for a, a Sun Ra record. I have about a dozen Sun Ra records. I would say this is one of the most accessible for uh, people who like outside the box and uh, avant-garde and, and very spaced out outside music. This is very, you know, trio, quartet, quintet based uh, throughout this with this great uh, playing, piano playing, very piano centric and beautiful and pretty straight ahead jazz. It's, it's in a way uh, more conservative uh, for a Sun Ra record, but it's 
this is a good entry point to get into Sunra. Of course, if you like this and you go on, you may be surprised, but it's a, a recommendation and it only came out last few weeks again. And it, it does make uh, one of my favorite albums of this year. Another late uh, record that came out on vinyl, it did come out early this year and I, I had uh, heard it digitally but it just came out because of the vinyl backup in the studios, I mean, in the, the pressing plants, is Dr. Lonnie Smith Breathe. Uh, it's kind of a second companion. There was a first volume with a very similar cover. This is a, a Blue Note uh, reissue, excuse me, a Blue Note issue, uh, produced by Don, was a live set uh, organ player who just passed away several months ago. Unfortunately, he missed uh, out on this release. Maybe it came out as the digital version came out, I'm not sure. It's very kind of soul jazz organ player playing uh, with some songs you'll recognize, uh, recognize like Why Can't We Be Together with Iggy Pop on it. And uh, side four on this, there's a couple great versions of Sunshine Superman, him on organ featuring Iggy Pop on vocals. And uh, it's, it's really a fun, this is a fun record, two LPs on Blue Note Records, uh, the late uh, Lonnie Smith, I just love this record. Again, soulful, organ, jazz-based uh, music. Another one that has that kind of soul jazz feel that's um, a surprise to me, and it's from the uh, classic series of Blue Note. It's Love Bug by Reuben Wilson. I had never heard this record. I got it because I'm, I'm trusting a lot of these uh, releases, and I read the description. Uh, this is from the late 60s, let's see, this is 1969, and it has Lee Morgan and George Coleman and Grant Green and Leo Morris, and it's great guitar, great, again, um, trumpet playing by Lee Morgan, and it's got um, Reuben Wilson on organ, so another organ-based record. I'm a fan of organ music. Uh, a lot of people who are into jazz, for some reason, uh, aren't into the uh, Jimmy Smiths and this kind of stuff, but fantastic, groovy record, as uh, you would imagine, but it's, it's a, a favorite of mine. Also on this classic series that, again, very that surprised me quite a bit, and is this, uh, the prophetic Herbie Nichols. Uh, again, another wonderful record uh, with a trio, which is Herbie Nichols on piano. Al McKibben on bass and the great Art Blakey on drums. Art Blakey seems to be everywhere on all these Blue Note issues. I mean, obviously the releases with his own uh, version of the Jazz Messengers as well as many other records. Very uh, piano-based centric again, a trio, fantastic record, nice cover, right? Um, modern art cover, one of the few of the classics that's a gatefold, uh, highly recommended. And uh, again, it's been on my turntable a lot. And the last in this initial jazz period is a record that I had ordered quite a while back, and it came from France on Sam Records. I did showcase several other Sam Records in my best of uh, releases this year on those those other videos that, if you haven't seen, you should watch. Uh, this is Live in Paris, uh, Nathan Davis. Um, double album. Sam Records does these beautiful reissues, pretty much a one-man shop out of France, and I try to get almost everything they put out because it's really well done. There's a lot of love that go into these reissues, these releases, and these records never were released officially in the United States. They were mostly from uh, labels in Paris during the 50s and 60s. Uh, saxophone bass, some of it's intense saxophone, but then he gets into the flute and plays some beautiful pieces as well. But uh, it's with the George uh, Aravantias trio, the 1966-67 ORTF recording, Sam Records. Again, a label that I am all in on and uh, recommended here. Okay, I think this is a good time in the middle of this to show some of the box sets that I hesitated to show, that I neglected to show in my favorite uh, box set video of 2021. And first, I'm going to show some uh, CD boxes. Now, Lee Morgan, live, the complete live at the Lighthouse, Hermosa Beach, California. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Lee Morgan. I pretty much get a lot of the Blue Note records and other records that he's done. This uh, came out uh, kind of an offshoot of a tone poet. Maybe it was a specialty. And it came out on a multi-vinyl. Uh, and I decided 
I know some of this music, obviously I hadn't heard the whole thing because uh, now this is the expanded entire uh, series of shows. I decided to go with the CD set because I know the way I listen to music, that many CDs and maybe the expense a little bit. I thought this was the value and the way I put this on. And of course with the multi sets, you're getting a lot of the same songs, various version of it, but the CD set is quite nice. And there's a lovely uh, annotated book of uh, the great Lee Morgan. And these are from 1970. So they have the Friday and Saturday sets and Sunday sets uh, at the uh, lighthouse in Hermosa Beach, California. This, I believe the uh, vinyl version is sold out. Uh, but if you're a jazz fan and you like Lee Morgan, I really have, uh, highly recommend this. And I think for me, this CD box was the sweet spot of this series. Next, um, not quite a box set. And we all know in the cheap bins, you can find Nancy Sinatra records and light in the attic is doing a whole reissue series. And I've been getting some of them, even though I have some of the originals, but this was a special CD edition with this book. And how cool is this? It's, um, it's one CD and you can get this on a regular size CD. I think this book is out of print already, but just the photographs alone in this wonderful book really um, illustrate. And I talk about the story and her collaborations, obviously, with uh, the great uh, producer and songwriter and, and singer, Lee Hazelwood. I mean, just how mod is this from these great recordings? I mean, you can't deny, uh, obviously, you know, you hate to uh, objectify the sexuality and sensuality of, of um, Nancy Sinatra in the 60s, but she made so many, many great records. I mean, we all know boots are made for walking, but some velvet morning, a conversation with her, pretty, pretty great. So this is a comp of, a, of sort of a greatest hit from 1965 to 67. You can get the main CD, you can get this on vinyl through Light in the Attic, and they're doing a nice series of issues. So uh, a recommended box set in a way, this is just a, I guess this would be not a box set, but a, a special edition if you could track it down. If you're into the visualizations and the packaging design, like I am, uh, very much, very highly recommended. Now, this was a record store day that um, I've had several of these records over the years. I probably had them all way back in the day. But this box set came out on war is fantastic. I mean, you all know the music. All day music, the world is a ghetto. Cisco Kid, funky, soulful, Southern California, LA, East LA, soulful, jazzy music. Has all their albums. I don't need to show you all the covers. I love this slipcase, and this is a fantastic set, and it's a great way to get it. I don't know if this is still available. Uh, next, there's nothing like a Grateful Dead concert, and this period especially for me. Uh, every year they put out a special box set version. I did get the CD set and the vinyl set. And this is from St. Louis, 1971. My sweet spots uh, are that kind of early 70s. That's when I saw them the most. First saw The Dead in 68, but I went to so shows 71, 72, 73, 74. A lot of shows at Winterland, the New Year's Eve shows. And this is a period, mostly with Donna, um, a God show after this, but uh, Pigpen and... Um, Great, great packaging, great set, great sound. I mean, these are board tapes going through that plangic, plangic process that kind of cleans thing up. So it does it, there is a digital step, but um, it's fantastic. And as a Grateful Dead fan, uh, I love these sets. So that is, uh, would have been included in my box set, uh, original thing if I had gotten it in time. Another reissue that is one of my favorites. I don't know why it surprised me so much, but it's, REM's Adventure, New Adventures in Hi-Fi. And I loved the CD when it came out. And I played it quite a bit. Um, Patti Smith is on it as, uh, you know, a co-vocal with Michael Stipe. And this is, I think, as I recall, if I get this right, this is the last album with um, Barry on drums on it. And then he had to leave the group because of his uh, brain uh, complications, uh, tumor he had. Um, I forgot how great this album is, and this reissue, uh, Kraft put it out, is a stunning 
record, a thick rock and roll record, really well recorded. I've been blasting this again for the last several months and I, I forgot this on my reissue. I think someone in the comments, you did, you over there on the left, uh, mentioned this record as one of the great reissues of the year and I totally agree. It's fantastic pressing, great recording, and just a, uh, a wonderful release. So REM's New Adventures in Hi-Fi. Again, one, I don't know why I forgot how great this record is, and it's fantastic. One of their best, in my opinion. I know there are people that are that jump more into the IRS versions uh, first, but of course, Automatic for the People and Beyond, great record, but this is fantastic. Now, uh, several others, when we get into, uh, this came out around the time I did that video, just a little before, and I hadn't really listened to it a, a lot at that point. A few people pointed out Robert Plant, Alison Krauss, Raise the Roof, again, another uh, covers and unusual songs uh, produced and curated in a way by T-Bone Burnett. This record is beautiful. It's beautiful recorded, it's gorgeous. It's not as upbeat as the first one, Raising Sand, but this is a grower. It's a great sound on it. And again, it's uh, been on my turntable a lot uh, since it came out. What, two months ago or so. So Alison Krauss, Robert Plant, uh, again, a fantastic release for 2021. Another record I totally blanked out about, and I I played it a lot when it came out, and then I filed it away. And I'm a big fan of John Hyatt, and this is John Hyatt and the Jerry Douglas Band. Jerry Douglas Band. Jerry Douglas is a fantastic dobro player, and John Hyatt, to me, is, is one of the... Um, not unknown, but uh, a great songwriter who uh, doesn't get a lot of do. Although, you know, Bonnie Raitt, and, I mean, a lot of his songs were hits for others. Of course, his um, collaborations uh, he did with uh, Jim Keltner and Ry Cooter and Niccolo are just fantastic on his solo album back in the day. But this has a great sound. It's really well recorded. I mean, maybe it's the, the cover's a little lightweight, but light, you know, I'm not going to this a record because of that. Uh, this particular record, I guess this was recorded during lockdown or during medium lockdown or whatever you want to call it, but it sounds so great. Uh, this is, you know, the colored <laughs> du, du jour vinyl for it, but Leftover Feelings is the name of the album. If you like rootsy music uh, with great songwriting, great vocals, uh, good lyrics, and just feel good music, but that great acoustic sort of rootsy sound of uh, a little on the uh, country bluegrass side, folk side, uh, but really well done. I mean, this is a good companion. It, it pairs nicely with uh, Robert Plant and Allison Krauss. So if you, if you want a record pairing and you want to have a little sip of something, uh, this would be a, a, a wonderful record pairing for 2021 for your holiday season. Now, I'm going to end up with an artist that put out, I think, 63 albums this year. Not really, but a lot of archive records, but two in particular. One I totally forgot when I did my box set video. And let me start with that. And then one that just came out after, uh, and I've been getting into it in the last uh, week and a half. But, of course, Neil Young, uh, Neil Young and Crazy Horse two great releases here. Uh, way down in the rust bucket, and this is uh, recorded, I believe, at the Catalyst, a sh one of the shows I was at in Santa Cruz when they kind of were getting ready for their big tour of that year. Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Uh, this is a multi-record set live, and it's, it's really good. I mean, I'm a Neil Young fan, and um, one, two, three, four LPs. Uh, Neil Young is doing great archive series. I mean, I mentioned that when I talked about uh, my video on bootlegs, where it's a bittersweet thing, uh, bootlegs for uh, some people these years, but they're doing these official bootlegs, these uh, vault series of things. Fantastic. Really great live record. Uh, intense, but in that Neil Young Crazy Horse live thing, which, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. And lastly, the record is Barn actually a new one of the first new album collaborations with i'm not am i right about this is this the first crazy horse record since psychedelic pill i can't remember remember i don't went after that really good record it, it, in fact side one the first cut in the last track remind me of harvest there's that acoustic sound and then it gets thicker uh, in the middle and on the other side but um fantastic recording obviously it's not the old barn up in 
uh, the mountains, of San, the San Mateo Mountains above Woodside, California and Half Moon Bay. It's, uh, where's he, in Colorado now, I guess. He left uh, California, uh, but uh, fantastic record. So that is, um, again, one of my favorites of this year. Really nice package. I'm all pretty much all in on Neil Young for the most part still. And um, what, could, what can you say about it? So thank you for watching. I really, uh, truly appreciate it. It's been um, an intense year again for a lot of people, but there's some great music coming out. If I missed anything, and I'm, there's probably some I totally forgot. I don't really keep a list, even though I put on Discogs uh, my, my releases as they come out. But um, thanks for watching. Put your comments in. Mazzy really appreciates uh, everything, uh, all the um, all the love, and even the people who don't love it, and that's okay. And you, you know, as long as you're not vicious and mean spirited with your uh, comments, I don't care if you disagree with me and put things down there. And I don't delete them unless it's like you're dumping on someone I know. Take care, Mazzy loves you.